Scenario two. Well, no, it would actually fall under scenario no. one. It's no, it's scenario two because the, it's moving. The velocity is no, more than zero. Look, look, look. Assuming the friction is the same here, we know that F F equals one point two is less than mu s. No, no. This is the whole point. This is the whole point of location two. There is nothing stopping this object. This object has what is this object velocity right now? Well. The what is the net force? If mu s times F N was greater than one point two, then this could also be placed in scenario one. No, this is this not is scenario one. This is scenario two. Why is this scenario two? F F is always equal to F N. No, this is, is that's that's than right. That's that's right. But but F S max. If this is the F S max. If this is the F S max. Well, that's if we don't know. And given that the previous problem F F K, we now know it's F F K. Is 1.2. All right, very FFK nice. K is always less than FFX. Very FFX nice. Max. Very nice. Now it is FF, FS max. Now what is it? This is FS max. FS max. If this was FFX max, then it's scenario two. So the friction graph is a representation of the relationship between applied force and frictional force. And it's pretty crazy. It's not like your typical graph. That's right, because friction the is... The force of friction rises as you apply more force, and eventually as you reach the maximum threshold, the force uh, of friction drops down and then stays constant as you move in the object. It's really tricky. So we're going to help you understand uh, how many graphs we're going to draw to help them understand. Seven. Seven. As you exert more applied force, the frictional force rises and it is actually equivalent to FA. So we know that. But then eventually it reaches this maximum threshold. This is equivalent to the coefficient of static friction times Fn. Once it reaches that, it lowers immediately and then stays at a constant value equivalent to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. All right, so don't worry if you don't under, they don't understand anything over there. This is just graph number one. Oh yeah, and let's just make this clear by saying any point on this diagonal is equal to F A. All right, okay, so good. That's a good point you said that. Any point of this diagonal line, the black line, all right, this is, you know, this is equal to F A uh, and F F. All right. FA and FF are equal. All right, so this is FF, this is FA. So now I'm gonna draw it, and I'm gonna write one, and then two, and then three. And then now I'm gonna draw it, this is two, and this is three, not zero. Okay, and I, over here, between those regions one and two, the acceleration is equal to zero because the net force in the x direction is the same as FA is equivalent to FF. So the two pulling forces cancel each other out and A is less than zero or equal. If you did not understand one, two, and three, hey, don't lose hope. So we're gonna call this one F as mean. We're gonna call this one F, F, F max. And we're gonna call this one F, K, and FK doesn't have max mean. FK is constant. All right. If you didn't understand this, hey, don't lose hope. And this is FF, this is FA, and this is graph number five. We're going to call this one, this one, velocity. What happened to the velocity? Velocity can be decreases. Velocity can increase. Can increase. All right. Here, velocity is doesn't increase, doesn't decrease, it's rest. Here, what happened? Velocity, velocity is one, or velocity is two, or velocity is three. The velocity is constant. Zero. But velocity cannot be zero on the top. No, but I mean like zero because the acceleration is just starting, like a car when right. you push the pedal. Right, so this is five. If you did not understand five, hey, don't lose up. Six. Thus, this is mu k, and this is mu s. I this is also mu s right here. Okay. So what is graph number 
seven. Graph number seven. Okay, let's do graph number seven. Let's see whether we can find out with uh, more information. Try carry. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Try carry is 0.5 kilogram. And the friction force is, force of friction is 1.2. Two. Two. And guess what? Am Was your friction static or kinetic? Um, I, I'm not going to mention this right now. And applied force, applied force is uh, 1.6 newton. All right. Mm -hmm. So can you find the axillary? Uh, can you tell me what location this fall under? One, two, or three? Three. Three. Okay. So this is scenario A. So put A over here. Same problem. Same problem. Now this is 1.2. This is the applied force, FA is 1.2, and FF is also 1.2. That falls under... This is B. Scenario 2. Scenario 2. Well, no. It would actually fall under scenario... No. It's no, scenario would... 2. Because the, it's moving. The velocity is no, more than 0. Look, look, look. Assuming the friction is the same here, we know that FF equals 1.2 is less than mu s. No, no. This is the whole point. This is the whole point of location two. There is nothing stopping this object. This object has what is this object velocity right now? Well, the, if, what is the net force? If mu s times s n was greater than one point two, then this could also be placed in scenario one. No, this is this not is scenario one. This is scenario two. Why is this scenario two? F f is always equal to f a. No, this is, is that's that's than right. That's that's right. But but. Fs max. If this is the Fs max. If this is the Fs max. Well, that's if. We don't know. And given that the previous problem, Ffk, we now know it's Ffk, is 1.2. All right, very Ffk nice. Ffk is always less than Ffs very max. Very nice. Very nice. Now it is Ff, Fs max. Now what is it? This is Fs max. Fs max. If this was Ffs max, then it's scenario two. Is it just Ff? Uh, FFS. Okay. So then it would be scenario one. Because if <coughs> FF, if this is the force of friction static and it hasn't re yet reached the threshold, mu S F N, then that means that FA is equal to FF and it is in this portion of the graph. All right. So once again, and also, if you didn't understand graph number seven, lose hope because there are no more graphs. Okay, so one more time, this is scenario one, this is, no, this is scenario, let's say A, this is scenario B, and this is scenario C. Can you place those scenario on this graph? This is scenario C, this is scenario B, and this is scenario A. We've given you multiple examples of how the relationship between the force of friction and the applied force works.